Hi there! Welcome to the 11th episode of the Filters tutorial. After the previous talks on the low pass and high pass silent key filters, today we will introduce the band pass silent key active filters. We will first see how the four impedances of the silent key filter can be adjusted to obtain a band pass behavior, and then we will examine an alternative design much simpler to implement, although it needs a few more components. And finally, we will go to the lab to see the filter at work. Let's begin! Let's start with a quick refresh of the silent key filters. They are realized around an op-amp with a feedback network made of four impedances, Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Depending on the nature of the four impedances, the filter will act in a specific way. In a previous episode, we have seen how to calculate the generalized transfer function of such filters, which is obtained as the ratio of the output voltage and the input voltage of the circuit. Once we define the nature of each impedance, we can replace the value in the generalized transfer function and obtain the actual transfer function of the specific circuit. And we have already seen how to specify the four impedances to obtain a second-order low-pass filter and a second-order high-pass filter. To obtain instead a band-pass filter, we have to define the four impedances as follows. Z1 is replaced with a resistor R1, Z2 is replaced with a capacitor C1, Z3 is replaced with another resistor R2, and finally we replace Z4 with a parallel of a resistor R3 and a capacitor C2. Following the same procedure we have seen for the low pass and high pass filter, we can replace the values of the impedances of these components in the generalized transfer function, make some adjustments and obtain this final formula for the transfer function. In here, the term 2 alpha represents this fraction, and omega zero, which is the center frequency of the filter, is defined as in this other equation. Note that omega zero depends on all five components used in the filter, so the final formula is different than the ones we found for the cutoff frequency of the other two filters we have studied. Another important parameter that can be calculated from these formulas is the Q-factor, which, like in the other filters, defines the exact shape of the module of the transfer function. Let's now take a closer look at the transfer function itself. You can see that this function has two poles, since there is a second-degree equation at the denominator, and it has one zero provided by the first-degree equation at the denominator. And as usual, we can draw the diagram of the transfer function module as a function of the frequency. We can represent the position of the zero with a circle, the position of the two poles with the two crosses. And then, based on the position of the poles and zeros, we can draw the asymptotic form of the diagram, represented here in green. Then, based on that, we can draw the actual diagram, which I represented in red. The frequency f0 corresponding to omega0 over 2 pi is where the maximum value of the curve is located, just between the two poles, when the drawing horizontal axis is in a logarithmic scale. The bandwidth of the filter is given by the distance of these two poles. The design of such a circuit depends on the two equations for omega0, or f0, and of the q-factor, exactly like in the case of the low-pass and the high-pass filters. However, note that there is an extra variable R3 in these equations, and this variable increases the difficulty for the calculation of the parameters given the value of F0 and Q. Now, I am not going to go through all the design calculations for this band pass filter, because it would be too tedious, but feel free to give it a try if you are up to. Instead, I will show you another way to make a band pass filter using a sudden key configuration that Although it uses a free extra components than this one, it is much easier to design, because it refers back to the design of the low-pass and the high-pass filters. The alternative way of making a band-pass silent key filter is to serialize a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter, 
making sure that the high pass filter has a lower cutoff frequency than the one of the low pass filter. The overall diagram of the transfer function module for such a circuit is like this. And you can see how it resembles exactly the diagram we examined for the traditional form of the filter. The center frequency of this filter is practically the median value of F1 and F2, always considering a logarithmic scale for the horizontal axis. This way we can also define the bandwidth of the filter, which is in fact given by F2 minus F1. And once we specify the values for F1 and F2, and the value of the Q factor, we can design this filter in two separate and easy steps. First, we design the high pass section of with the exact same procedure we have seen in the previous episode of this series. And second, we design the low pass section, again using the same procedure we have seen for the low pass filters. This one is an example of filter with F1 equals 9.5 kHz and F2 equals 10.5 kHz. That gives us a bandwidth of 1 kHz and a center band frequency of 10 kHz. In addition, I have used a Q factor of 1. This circuit works exactly the same way as one made for the traditional Salen key approach that we examined at the beginning. The trade-off is that it has an aspect definitely more complex than the traditional one. However, the increase of the circuital complexity helps us with much simpler calculations for the design. I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's what exactly is. Whenever you need to design a Salen key second order passband filter, you have the choice of using one approach or the other. It is just up to you, and if you do some research, you will find that there are even more options for creating such kind of filters. These two, however, are the ones that I prefer to use the most. Let's now move to the lab, where I have already built a prototype of this filter, which we can use to see how it works in practice. And here is the circuit under test. I have used an LM358 op-amp, which basically is a chip that contains two operation amplifiers, one on the pins on the bottom side and another one on the pins on the upper side. So this part that you see here, all these components are basically those for the high-pass filter, high-pass part of the filter that we are going to examine. And the upper side instead is the low-pass filter. They are in series with each other, and so they constitute the bandpass filter that we were talking about. On the input of the filter, I have put the output of my function generator right over here. And you can see that it's currently outputting 10 kHz at 5 volts peak to peak, and it's a sine wave. And that sine wave is visible right here on the oscilloscope, which is connected to the output of the circuit, which is basically the output of the low-pass part of the filter. So let's take a look now at what happened when we change the frequency of the function generator. I'm trying to put both of them here at the same time on the view so you can see what happened so right now we have 10 kilos and we have a signal that is about, that is right over here, which is about, uh, since this is 500 millivolts, it's 1, 2, 3, about 3.5 volts peak to peak in total. And uh, the, the frequency is set to 10 kilohertz. So let's see what happens if I increase and decrease the frequency with respect to the 10 kilohertz. If this filter works as expected, we should see the amplitude of the output signal decreases in both directions. So let's increase first. And you see the amplitude is decreasing on the, on the oscilloscope. And if I go in the opposite direction, so instead of increasing, I decrease the frequency, I obtain exactly the same effect. And this proves that the filter is actually centered at 10 kHz, and so it's a bandpass filter at 10 kHz. 
And with this, our discussion on the silent key filters is almost complete. We still need to examine one last case, the notch filter, which we will treat in the next video of this series. And for that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to enable the notifications by clicking on the bell if you haven't done so already, and so you won't miss the next videos. See you soon, and as usual, happy experiments!